Ross, we all knew it. I have ghosts. You have uh, what? I have ghosts. Is that I got a, a case of the ghosts? Can you get penicillin, or is that? I is don't there a know. Vaccine? I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to get an exorcism, I think, because I've got ghosts in my house. I've got proof of it. You sure it's not a cat? I'm positive. So I'm still on occasion monitoring my sleep with that. Um, it's a security camera, but I like to call it, you know, the nanny camera, the baby monitor. Yeah. But I'm using it to see how I'm sleeping. And twice now, I have caught strange lights moving through my room. And Don't the you... first one, yeah. what? No, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. I, I, will, I, will, I won't start debunking you immediately. Go ahead. <laughs> So the first one, I was all trying to convince myself, like, oh, maybe that's the angle that a car went by outside and the headlights, somehow only one of them was able to penetrate my blackout curtains that I fold in a specific way so that light will not shine across the bed from the sun or the street or anyone standing at my window shining a light. And so I was watching myself and I went to shift in it. Because it only, the camera only goes off when I shift around Mm -hmm. and a light just very slowly moves across the screen. And so I was like, all right, well, you know, that's fine. That's fine. Whatever. But then just this morning at four o'clock in the morning, again, the camera caught the same kind of light moving at the same kind of speed, but in a completely different spot and direction than the other one. And it's just a little light and it just, the clips are also very short. So you don't really get to see if the light like hangs around for a long time. Um, (laughs) Like if it's a face. (laughs) Or if it's a face. Um, But I've been trying to think like, because it's not like I have jewelry on me that could create some kind of reflection from what kind of light. And it's not like the cat still wears his metal collar. So Because I was thinking, like, what could that be reflected off of? But Nigel doesn't have anything on him that would reflect. I don't have any jewelry. I'm not wearing, like, mirrored nail polish or something that might be glinting light. So I don't think there's any explanation other than ghosts. (laughs) It's clearly there is no possible other alternative explanation. I'm going to give it to you. I'm going to let you have it. Yeah. You've convinced me. I uh, (laughs) I think possibly even demons. No, we. I mean, we knew about the demon. Right. You right. called me out on that last time we talked about it. That's a different manifestation. <laughs> oh, okay, sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, no, that's that's a known issue. That's not the light, though. I um, I'm gonna let you have it. I'm just gonna give it to you. I. You know what? I am. Uh, I am tired of news and <laughs> current <laughs> events. Um. So I am. You know what? I'm. I'm on board. Let's. Uh. Can I can can I come and we can do the um, the all night, you know, the thing they do on TV, the paranormal investigation. Yeah, we're like. On TV, it's just is up all night and then somebody sees a light and then they go, oh, this is the thing. But in a movie, it's terrifying. Right. And then see, I want the one where like we're like running around the house because it's scary and it's horrible, you know, but not that scary, like something in between. So a scenario that's in between the like reality show haunting or the, you know, the, the, the normal real life ghost thing where they like come to your house and then there's like, they're, you know, they play, they, they record things and they play the static and they're like, and they're like, did you hear that? And you're like, um, yes, I did. Of course I did. It's pancakes Um, with syrup. It said pancakes with syrup. (laughs) Um, and, but like not the full movie one where like, you know, you know, like just out, we're just outside the basement door and then we hear like <laughs> from the basement. And then like, we finally have to go in cause we're doing a ghost thing. And then the, the door slams shut behind us and we're locked in the basement. And then we come out and we're like, we don't have any pupils in our eyes. That thing that's too much. So something yeah, that's in way between. Too much. Plus if we get locked in the basement, we could just watch TV down there until the door unlocks. So. Well, not if there's no know. power because ghosts know about power. Um, it seems to be the case <laughs> in things I've seen because um, they always know how to, tr- they know how to cut the lights. <laughs> so that, you know, that's true. And I am going to use that excuse next time I oversleep or turn off my alarm in my sleep. 
Yeah. Um, I'm going to say like, it wasn't me. It was the ghost. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I'm all for it. Let's do it. Your house is haunted, yeah. clearly. Yeah, it's obviously haunted. Um, I'm I'm not surprised. I don't know. It is. I'm not even that disconcerted. Yeah. It is a horror movie setup, right? That you're going to like tape yourself at night because, in fact, in fact, I'm just I'm mailing this idea to myself right now because that's the only legal way to copyright a, a, an idea, um, as we all know. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh wow look at that oh my gosh the letter carrier just appeared and snatched that envelope right out of ross's hand yeah thanks, he has Derek. now officially mailed it to himself <laughs> um, he just handed it right back to me and it's fine he put a stamp on it and it's fine so that's all you need to do so i have a lot of ideas so uh you know and derek's usually available um because we're in a thruple. Uh, but so <laughs> <laughs> um, he's not really a mailman he just wears the outfit uh but <laughs> That it is, is a very on brand. Yeah, isn't it? It is a horror movie scenario that like you would tape yourself sleeping just to get insight on your sleep data. Yes. And then you would find, you know, it would be it would have to start small because it couldn't be like, oh, there's a guy walking around your room because then you would call the police and probably get a hotel room. Right. Um, but, you know, there'd be little things like this. So like it's going to start with the lights. And then there's going to be, you know, you're going to see like a little paper piece of paper go flying. And you're like, that's sort of weird. But I don't know. I guess it was the wind. Maybe I was snoring. Um, you're going to see, <laughs> you know, you're going to see the covers sort of shift, but not like, you know, you're going to see like a little like a little tiny indent in the bed. Like and it's like, that's not where I'm sleeping. But I guess my maybe my leg did something weird and it looks funny, but OK, it's weird. And then, um, you know. Then the guy, then the guy's just going to be standing there. <laughs> yeah. This is yep. going to take yep. I like place that. over the course I like of that. like a month, I'd say. So I've got a couple more weeks, I guess, until I've got like some kind of full blown man walking around. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just I'm me. <laughs> it's just me. Because I, I'll do anything to make a point. Literally anything to make a point. So, <laughs> yep. <laughs> and actually and, and honestly i heard you had leftover snacks so i'm just <laughs> and i thought they might be hidden in your bedroom <laughs> and I, I know, you know i i know you're not going to wake up in the night so I, no but i i have a sense i might scare you more than i scare me because you've forgotten how i float my arms around in the air while i sleep yeah yeah now so that you reminded I'm, me of that it's not the guy's not going to be me <laughs> i'll just tell you that <laughs> not coming anywhere near where you're sleeping so yeah, that's just a thing I do in the night, which does remind me, and I feel really bad about this now, when I was in college, a friend of mine's new roommate, because we all had roommates, like for some of us the first time ever, yeah. we'd never shared a room with a sibling or whatever, and a friend's roommate apparently waved her arms around at night, and we just thought this was the funniest thing in the world, mm. like we'd never heard a thing, and we never made fun of this roommate directly to her face or anything, so I shouldn't feel bad, but we sure laughed pretty hard and waved our arms around pretending to be her. Oh. But guess guess what? I also joke is I'm on also you. Guilty of that. Um, joke is yeah, on you, now, Heather. I also have another fun new sleep thing. I restarted orthodontia. Oh my god! Really? Yeah. Good. Twice but, over. I mean, <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> It's round three. This is getting obscene. How um, are you going to be like 103 years old trying to get <laughs> yeah. your teeth straight? And your teeth are yeah. fine, by the way. Um, I'm, I'm looking at them right nice. now and they seem fine. Uh, so it's not. In fact, they look really straight. They look like straighter than any teeth I've ever seen. So I'm not sure what the problem <laughs> is, but I accept you. I just think um, you're going to be this. You're going to be this 98 year old with braces and it's going to be very cute. You're going to have four teeth. They're going to have four teeth <laughs> all like, but they're going to be super no, straight. I want to keep these. Oh my okay. gosh. All the brushing and flossing I do. I want to keep these forever. Yeah. I don't want these going anywhere. Um, yeah. During the pandemic, my retainer broke once okay. and I went and got it repaired. And I swear I left that office. I will not say what office I was going to, but I was like, well, if I got COVID, I definitely got it here. I don't even know what they're doing. It was terrifying. Yeah. Everybody was, I mean, people were practically making out. Two people had to come over and scan my teeth. They didn't sanitize their hands or anything. Oh. I was like, what? What? I? This is terrible. And I left there just feeling awful and really did the thing. 
you know, pre-vaccine are these, sometimes. Are these the same people that have told you you need orthodontia yet again? <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, they just fixed the retainer once. Okay. Then a week later, the other side of it broke. And I was like, all right, forget it. Um, so then I was wearing my night guard that my dentist made me, but that was not as good as my retainer. So my teeth shifted. Mm. And now all I want to do is like shift them back. All so right. I'm on another journey, but I got right. the kinds that you may not hear my characteristic orthodontia lisp. And that's because I got the kinds that you can click in and out and you're supposed to wear them for 22 hours a day, which I don't know. I don't know how anybody can do that. Like. Yeah. That only leaves you two hours for all kinds of things. Like they want you to also whiten your teeth while you're doing this. So that's another five minutes. They want you to brush and floss for as much as I brush and floss. That's another like half hour per day. So really that only leaves me an hour to do all of my drinking of hot beverages and eating of food. And yeah, right. Yeah. Well, yeah. I guess you got to stay pretty for the demon lover and the ghosts. And that's important. Exactly. I'm proud of you. Yep. I'm proud of you. (laughs) And at least I'm not disturbing either of them with the grinding of my teeth. Yeah. I guess my new night thing is I started medicinal uh, wine because I was like, I was reading about how wine's good for you. And I have some health issues that I thought might, might be of assistance. So I guess I'm, so I'm just drinking myself to sleep these days. Sounds. Yeah. Do what it takes. I don't have any other details. It's just, (laughs) that's what's going on. Well, that way you won't notice the demon lovers. You won't notice the ghosts. Right. It's all going to be fine. Right. Because the problem is the demon lovers want to talk, you know, uh, when you're when they're done. And that's I want to go to sleep. So it's helpful if I can just sort of pass out. And by demon lover, I'm 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 talking about Derek, honestly. So, (laughs) (laughs) you know, it's it's nice to have an excuse. It's nice that yours has a name. See, I from what I've picked up on the cameras, mine are not chatty. I don't even know if they stick around, honestly. So far, um, but you don't have sound. I've caught myself, right? Yeah, no, I have sound. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah, my cameras definitely have sound. So I've also caught myself um, singing a little song in my sleep. All right. Yeah, I went to roll over one night, and I went. How much um how how much of your day is spent reviewing tapes of your sleep from the night before? Well, you know, um I can wear my my aligners while I review the tapes, so it doesn't affect that. It doesn't take that long. You're a fascinating person. You know that? <laughs> I just want to know what I'm doing. Mm. I've only caught myself snoring once. I haven't caught any talking besides that singing yet. Did you listen to this? Is so, there static that you can listen to and hear? Again, because the de- the ghost voices are not, they're not clear. You need to listen to the static. I mean, is that something you're doing? If there's static, is there, you know, you got to find that. You know, I haven't done all of the enhancing yet. Yeah. Yeah, because they'll say, <laughs> I like those shows. I really do. Um, I don't watch them a lot, but I like the shows where they're like, oh my God, this is so good. And then they'll be like, and they'll caption it on the screen and they'll be like it'll be like kill your father and you're like oh okay (laughs) clear as day because i read it on the screen and they'll be like and they'll play it again they'll be like oh my god listen to that (laughs) like kill your father and everybody's like oh my god i can't believe that and i'm watching it at home can't believe it because i see it it's captioned obviously so it's yeah it but you know what you day. know what the ghost was really saying was cauliflower right right you're just generally hungry right because you can't eat because yeah. you're you're dead right uh, you're just a little tough. orb of light that that right. moves around in my google memories it came up that something like seven years ago was when we went on a ghost tour in ohio you and i yeah did not see a single ghost i did afterwards when we were all down in the basement and that lady was talking about Mr. Salt, who used to work mm-hmm. at the prison, and someone asked where Mr. Salt was, she pointed over her shoulder, and I took a picture while she was doing that. And for real, there was a giant dust moat exactly where she was pointing. 
<laughs> dust mode, aka orb. In the, in the, <laughs> in the abandoned, in the giant decaying prison dusty. building. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes things are just dusty. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to. I'm not on the debunking thing today. (laughs) No, I know you're not. You're even. You're even willing to believe that the strange little lights that go around my room are, are ghosts. I honestly don't know what they are though. I've been trying to try to to figure out like what that could be that moves like that at that angle. Um, I think a weird uh, dot of light flooding around your room at night is probably about the least weird thing that goes on in your bedroom. So I am totally willing to run with that. I have no problem with that whatsoever. Yep, I'm with it. I'm 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 down again. You just have to watch out because this is the point in my screenplay <laughs> when, you know, you're going to see an, there's going to be an escalation. So just be prepared. Yep, <laughs> that's, that's what I start folding my legs around. Right. <laughs> Derek better not be coming to your house, too. That's all I'm no, saying. No, no, no. Ugh. No, that's that's just my other thing. I tend to, like, pull my legs out from under the covers and then put them back very frequently. All right. It's because you get I, hot. I think that's it. Who would I, um, I've got a serious thing. Do we want to do it? I guess we have time, right? Do you have I a fun know. thing? I have no idea. Can we do a fun um, thing? I'm no, I mainly have the importance of mourning losses, even when they seem small. All right. Well, I'll do mine then. I'll I'll do mine then. And then we can do yours. Okay. Does that sound good? How long do we have? We had some technical issues. We had some, we, we got, we still got like 20 minutes. So we got like way, 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 way too much time. And I don't, (laughs) I don't, I I don't feel like your orbs, orb stories going, got any more juice in it. Um, (laughs) I don't, I don't, I don't feel like you're, I saw I don't feel like I, you're, I saw a light in my room last night uh, story is going to get 20 minutes worth of mileage out of, out of it. No this offense. is the second time I've seen the light. That's true. Just wait till tonight. I want to hear. <laughs> I want to hear. I'll report again. back. Don't you the worry. escalation is definitely going to be. Remember, you got to look for. I think the thing to look for would be, you know, little things shifting to where like it could just be a breeze. Could be, you know, the cat off camera knocked something. And then definitely, you know, you you, you want that like. You know, the covers sort of pull back. And again, it sort of looks like maybe you did it, but it also looks like um, a ghostly, you know, invisible hand is pulling it back and getting in bed with you. So that is the you know, that's where you're getting to at some point. All right. Well, Um, I will. um, I don't know. I'll leave the door open so you can break the fishing wire and get this footage. (laughs) Okay. yeah, not going to be me. So um, (laughs) (laughs) but I do have people. (laughs) Um. Uh, <laughs> rapture um critical race theory heather let's talk about it yes let's talk Here's, about it this is so stupid <laughs> everything is so stupid right now so um there are multiple states i don't even want to go through all of it um i just wanted to bring this up so this has been in the news a lot lately so um it is how many states do we have here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten like something like 18 states currently have in the works um, some kind of, um, they are, well, they say they're banning critical race theory. That is sort of the, 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 um, the overwhelming thing here. So it's barely worth getting into, but so critical race theory is the, this is sort of an academic, um, it's, it's not even really a theory in the way that we think of theories. It's sort of an academic lens, like, um, you know, a particular way you might look at certain things in history. So, the, so it's a, it's a, it's not even like a, it's not even a, it, even as a, even as a theory, it's not like a concrete, like, this is how you look at the world. It's a, oh, this is a way that we could study these issues. And it's the idea that, it, you know, it's, it's, it has to do with, um, you know, race as being an important determining factor in, uh, the development of cultures and societies and modern society and things like that. Um, so this be- somehow somebody heard about this and it became a catch all for any um, education about uh, racism or slavery or reconstruction or Jim Crow or any of those things. So basically what's happened is so this has become the new thing. This is the new like communism, right? So like communism, okay. when people were talking about communism, what they really meant was um, people being nice to black people and liking Jews. Fine. 
So that's mm-hmm. what that was always about. It was always like, you know, communism always was like suspiciously, um, you know, you were a communist uh, if you thought black people, you know, should have equal rights. So that was, you know, okay. it's so it's that kind of thing. So it's become the new communism, right? Like um, critical. Race. Now, there's <laughs> there's no school anywhere in the country that has critical race theory on its curriculum. Right. Um, mm-hmm. it, and it's very deep red states that are the most concerned about this. So it seems odd that those would be the places where this is the largest problem with the, so the, the stated concern just to post, give the other side of this slightly is that, um, these are teaching, um, children that they are unequal and that, uh, you know, black people are superior to white children or things like that. And they just want it to be about equality. So it's very important that we teach equality. So that is the, that is the stated thing here. This is 18 States are working on or have passed laws to ban, um, some version of critical race theory and the what's super like super duper duper wild about this <laughs> is these are really like broadly worded. I mean, this is, it's really disturbing. So again, nobody's teaching critical race theory. I don't know. Apparently there's a broad concern among parents in these States that their third grade teacher is like running out and studying critical race theory on the sly and then going to like bring it back and teach all the third graders this like highly academic, <laughs> you know, lens from which to view social issues. Um, <laughs> so apparently this, you know, in 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 deep red states, this is a this is a problem that, um, you know, school shootings are not an issue. We're not worried about that. Um, I mean, some of the wording of these things. So the one. Um, OK, so. Um, <laughs> In Arizona, um, and I don't I, I don't know if that I have a lot of notes on this just because it's so many states and I didn't want to go into all the details. But so, again, there are like 18 states. Um, um, so Arizona just passed. And again, I don't know if the governor signed this yet, but um, teachers teachers will face a five thousand dollar penalty if they, uh, quote, allow classroom discussions on controversial topics such as racism or fail to give equal weight to divisive topics. Um, also anything that would make a, could potentially make a child feel guilty about their being their race. Oh, um, wow. Which is fairly broad. <laughs> I mean, make a child feel guilty. I mean, cause I can't control wow. <laughs> if, if I teach that slavery was bad, um, I can't, I can't really control how a white child is going to feel about that. (laughs) You really can't. Um, And the, and the fail to give equal weight to divisive topics. I mean, like divisive topics, like what? Like, well, you know, like here's the pros of slavery. Is that the divisive topic or the Holocaust? I mean, I don't know. Is the, is the, is the opposite is the other side of holo- the Holocaust that it was good or that it never happened? I mean, I, you know, so I'm right. not sure what I you would do there, what the requirement or is would it be. both, or maybe I, both you have to teach. Wow. Yeah. Um, and again, this is across multiple States and they're all like, so broadly worded like this. Nevada has sort of been an outlier in that Nevada went to implement um, some, um, some, some more equitable teaching standards that would give, actually some weight to the experiences of say black people in America, which (laughs) I know we are brought up to believe because of our education system is a sidebar is some kind of like footnote as opposed to being brought up to believe that as opposed to being as if not, you know, mainline a part of the story as anything else, as anything else you've learned. Um, so um, in Nevada, uh, there's a group that so massive protests over this in Nevada because they actually went the other direction a little bit. Uh, massive protests. One group is calling for body cameras to be installed on teachers that they would have to wear at all times um, to make sure that they're not teaching about black people, basically. Um, <laughs> and some of the stuff, I mean, some of the discussions. So um there's a so in Tennessee, the lawmakers uh, wanted to do this because, for instance, they they said that, you know, some students are being taught that the three fifths compromise was um, was anti black people when actually that was pro 
you know, black people to have them be three fifths of a um, person. So that's important that we correct that. I've seen some <sighs> in relation to this. I've seen some people have been posting like these are textbooks from some of these states. Like there was one from Missouri uh, where um, the, the the slavery section was literally the slavery slash civil war section was literally, um, you know, it was a oh, let's teach history through the lens of the people who lived it. And it was about a white lady who Uh, lived on a plantation and how sad she was that her family went and died in the Civil War (laughs) and how she lost, she didn't have her plantation anymore and she was very sad. I mean, that was literally the, that's literally the education that a lot of Missouri kids are getting about slavery. Um, Yes, yeah. Sadly, that does not surprise me at all. It upsets me, but I'm not at all surprised. Well, and even, you know, we both came up and I, you know, I'll speak for me, like came, you know, I lived in a few different States growing up. I mean, I, you know, I got the, I don't know that this has changed much. I mean, I think the extremely enlightened, thoughtful version of the way kids are taught history in America Mm -hmm. is like, Oh, there was slavery. Slavery was bad. Um, A white guy named Abraham Lincoln came and got rid of it. Um, you know, Harriet Beecher Stowe wrote uh, Uncle Tom's Cabin, and that made people think yes. so maybe slavery is bad. And then Abraham Lincoln got rid of slavery. Um, and then nothing much happened till the civil rights movement in the 60s. And Martin Luther King came along and he was pretty good. Yep. And Rosa Parks. And then uh, that's pretty much it. For, um, uh, but also <laughs> in there was um, and, you know, Harriet Tubman was really cool. Oh, see, I didn't. And everybody I didn't, would be like, I didn't get a oh, thing about yeah, Harriet Tubman did. in school. I didn't learn a thing about Harriet Tubman. I wonder if it's because some of, like the Underground Railroad, there were stops like here in Rochester. Yeah, and I and wasn't I in Rochester at that point. I wonder if maybe that's why yeah. it was for us. Mm-hmm. But yeah, we bought, we got that, but also like, and wow, kids, there was this amazing person, Harriet Tubman, who was yeah. doing this cool thing, and we'd all get excited, which not to discount how cool Harriet Tubman was. Oh, sir, for real. But like the, the glossing over, like, it was bad. It was bad, mm-hmm. but it's done and everything's OK now because the civil rights movement fixed everything. Well, and it's yeah. And it's this idea that like, you know, it's this sort of, you know, particularly you get this with Martin Luther King, like this whitewashing of of the kind of oh, person God. Martin Luther King he was, was. Pacifist, a gentle man, never fight, never raise your voice. Like there's so much more. But you're right. The, the portrait we got was was that he was just some kind of very gentle man. Well, and it's always no fire too, whatsoever, you know, I, you know, and you see this too with like, what it doesn't dispute is the idea that, oh, there are some, there are some good, you know, I think all but the most very racist people will tell you like, oh, there are good, you know, yeah, I don't, I maybe don't like black people, but there are some good ones. There are a few good ones, you know, the kind, the, 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 <laughs> the ones that are sort of like we pretend Martin Luther King was, you know, sort of quiet, and very polite and, you know, didn't want to bother anybody too much, um, wrote some letters. Um, so it's also this by focusing on these couple of figures of which, again, it's like Martin Luther King and maybe her and Harriet Tubman. And like, you know, there are maybe like five that you might come across <laughs> in your education. George Washington Carver. Sure. Um, you know, it's like it, it, the emphasis on those individuals, which they're all important. I mean, the, 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 the ones right. that we kind of learned about, they're legitimately important. It's not that they're not, but it also sort of emphasizes this, like, oh, there were a few important good ones. Um, and we don't talk about the broader, you know, we, we don't talk about, and again, that's sort of like that's sort of the abbreviated history you get in schools for a lot of things. But I think it, in this case, it, re, you know, in, in, when it comes to black history in America, I think it really, it sort of, it, it doesn't help with that idea that, oh, there were a couple of really important, really good black people that did some good things and the rest of it, you don't need to know about. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Um, so this idea, and I, I mean, really doubt that's changed much since we were coming up. I don't think so. And I mean, this idea, you know, for for a few reasons, this is just horrifying to me. I mean, a the idea that we're so we're, we're, you know, this 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 history that's so underserved as it is, um, we're suddenly legislating like you can't even talk about it. You're going to get fined. We're going to put cameras on you to make sure you're not talking about it, because, again, these things are so vague. You know, it's it's 
it, it it's not like you're you know this 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 quote unquote critical critical race theory has become this catch all for um anything to do with race again anything that might might make a child feel guilty about their heritage like <laughs> that could be literally I... anything you know um and again you don't know what it is i guess you're i guess the parent shows up and said little jimmy feels guilty give me five thousand dollars i mean i guess that's what happens yeah. <laughs> um i guess so and kids get weird about stuff yeah i mean i feel like putting that on a teacher like I'm not saying that teachers should be somehow abusive in any way, but by teaching history, there's going to be some stuff that might make a kid feel bad or sad or mad. Yeah. So I, I don't know. Eh. Mm, yeah. I don't like it. Okay. I, I, again, I don't like the lack of history and I don't like the, I, you know, I don't like the disrespect to actual history. I don't like the, mm-hmm. you know, again, the idea that we're, you know clamping down on teachers telling true things right actual (laughs) historical facts because because we don't like those things i mean this is the whole like f your feelings cancel culture brigade that's like oh that but that hurts my feelings if we talk about how yeah if we talk about black people (laughs) like my feelings are very hurt by that when you bring that up (laughs) and when you bring up this history Oh, thank you very much for bringing this up because I have been seeing a lot of stuff all of a sudden about critical race theory. Mm-hmm. And I thought I had some idea of the the much more specific academic lens that you were talking about. Yeah. Like a very vague idea. I'm not going to say I'm somehow an expert. No, not by far. But I, I was getting a little confused. I was like, why are people bringing this up? Like, what what's going on? Because I yeah. have not been following the news like I should. <laughs> And now I get it. It's, it's, it's new communism. It, it's, it's, um, it's, it's wild. It's, it's wild. And it, you know, it, it, there, there's, they're, they're talking a lot about, and I just realized I miscalculated by like 10 minutes. So we only have a few more minutes. So I just sucked up all the remaining time, um, which I didn't mean to do. Cause I thought we have more time cause I'm bad at math. Uh, no, but that's all right. I'm bad at math too. But, uh, you know, th- this this came out of sort of the 1619 project um, f- that the New York Times was doing, which, again, I think is an important, you know, I I think even like little liberal weenie Ross me, you know, just the way I was always taught was like there's American history and there's like black history. And I was like, I was like, yes. teach me black history. I want to because I was little woke white boy you know who who was always that that person but um you know i was i was i was the one with my you know know why the cage bird sings <laughs> book at five years old walking around like i was that <laughs> i was that you know i was that weenie um but it still was it it still has taken me a long time to again to deprogram myself from that idea and i think the country is only beginning to deprogram itself from idea that from the idea that these are somehow like separate things or that, um, Mm -hmm. you know, black history is its own, you know, its own path and American history is, is this other path, you know, it's, it's really like, I, and I, and I haven't realized, I think even till recently, like how much, how ingrained that is in me. And I could tell you a lot about black history, but you know, black American history. But at some point I, you know, at some point I've really started to really, it's really started to soak into my head. Like these are the same thing for better and worse. I mean, you know, again, you know, the, if you look at, you know, 1619, uh, the first, you know, there, there are the ancestors of most black people. You know, you look at when the transatlantic slave trade, slave trade was going on. The ancestors of most black people were here before most white people. Um, building this country, not always by choice, <laughs> maybe not often by choice, but again, building, you know, truly building this country, literally, um, forming its economic background again, not necessarily because they wanted to, <laughs> uh-huh. but that doesn't change the fact that, um, to look at the, to look at them as separate or to look at, um, you know, black people as having built something for white America is it's you know it's not really the way to look at it but again that's how we're taught 
we're that taught that we're taught. we're taught that it's a separate thing that they're they're sidelines, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Even when I went to college, I specifically had to take African American literature, as it was called at the time. Mm-hmm. It was a separate course, and there was only one. Yeah. So the the and at the time, I don't think it occurred to me how how strange it was that there was only one. I think, honestly, I was just psyched that they had that available for me to take. Right, right. Yeah, it's it's so ingrained in us. And I think it's, yeah. some of this is, some of this is legit. I mean, some of this is people making a power play, you know, a mm-hmm. white power play, I guess. Um, it, 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 it's, it's, it's largely that. But I think it's also, I think a lot of the people who are freaked out by this idea genuinely have no i have no have zero understand i mean if you've been educated that if you've you know if you've lived your whole life for generations um being taught one way to look at things and suddenly somebody's like oh you know there's another way to look at it um mm-hmm. a lot of people are going to react that way and i and i see where it comes from i don't defend it i don't defend the people who are being willfully ignorant mm-hmm. and refusing to educate themselves um, and again, I don't think it's, if you bring up black history and, and someone has a freak out, I don't, that's, you know, that's on you. That's, <laughs> I can blame yeah, our education a, system all I want, but, yeah. and I will, but that's also on you. <laughs> so I don't defend that in any way, shape or form, but I also, I get where it comes from because mm-hmm. that's what we're teaching people. And that's what we're fighting to def- go on keep teaching people. So anyway, I don't know. I think that's our show. <laughs> <laughs> Well, in that case, coming up next on WAYOLP Rochester is the fantastic program Music Matters. So stick around and thanks for tuning in for us. Oh, I have to pull my thing back up. Wait. Yeah, sorry. I seriously miscalculated by like 10 minutes. So I didn't mean to like suck up the entire all the sh- no, all the rest of the show. Um, we like it. Let me. Sorry. And I'll have to edit this part. Out oh, cause yeah, because we have to I, restart. I didn't pull up my thing back up. OK, I'm ready now. So the long and short of it is I've managed to pickaxe through most of the sidewalk on one side of my street, and my neighbors seem grateful and in awe. They come out and stare at me, but they don't come too close, probably because they don't want to interrupt my work. Um, It's that or that you're a very badly, badly sunburned, like skin peeling, badly ugh, bulging bicep woman um, wielding a pickaxe. Uh, probably the former, though. Hmm. And another thing, Heather, those sidewalks, by the way, or for everyone, those are municipal property. You can't go ripping up the sidewalks. You have to share them. Not in my home, Ross. Okay, no, not in your home, but in front of your home. Not in front of my home, Ross. Not in front of my home. Ugh. I love it. <laughs> I don't know. I don't I know. It.